So guys, let's get busy. Let's get started with the first chapter. Our first chapter for today, professional image in the tourism industry. All right. So first of all, we need to understand the definitions. I explained to you, and I did so every time that we are on uh, live, I explained to you, you cannot understand or explain something if you don't know where it comes from. You need to understand the basics. And our basics in tourism is our definitions. So let's first look at the definition of the word image. And that will help us to take it through to corporate image, to businesses, and eventually to the tourism industry. So the concept image. Per definition, and this is the boring part, always reading a definition. A physical likeness or of a person or a thing or a visual appearance of an object or a mental representation of something previously perceived or experienced. Now guys, that's a mouthful. Basically what it tells us is that you are probably going to like something or not. You're probably going to love the way things are done or not. You're probably going to look at something or someone and like what you see or not. You're either going to refer back to a memory in the past when you were visiting a place or a, had interaction in customer service with an individual and remember that experience. And that basically creates image. All right, so let's have a look. The concept image is all about the general perception of a company that people perceive. So this is basically the way people look at the company. When you say the name of a company, immediately people will start thinking of experiences, what they heard of the company, what they've experienced of the company, and so forth. All right, so for a company to be successful and appealing, those two words are very important. That is the key because tourists will want to buy its products and services. It will increase sales if companies are successful and appealing. Now, what do businesses do to make sure their companies are appealing and successful? They have three methods. The first method, they use marketing. Marketing and advertising. That's the main way how they communicate their image to the public. And then also public relations, PR, as we know it all. And that is how they uphold and create their image. Guys, look at this over here. This is so cute and nice for me. What you see is what you get. So yeah, basically in core, without fancy words and explanations, especially in the tourism industry, what you see is what you get. So customers normally hope that when they see something nice and professional and appropriate, cost effective and of quality, that is what they will experience as well. And it comes through in a lot of marketing. So marketing is the key for companies to actually uplift and communicate their professional image. All right. Now, the concept of professional image. This is just in broad to give you an idea that it's not just one thing, the professional image of a company. Your company's image can and will always be affected by your products. In tourism, we have services. All right, if you take a person on a game drive, you're a game ranger, you're in the Kruger National Park, you were formally trained, and you take people on a game drive, that game drive, the way you interact with the people, the way you dress, the way you represent the company, that is your product, or in this case, your service that you offer, and that's what people will remember. So it's very important to know that whatever you do as an employer for a company represents the bigger image of that company. And that is why people, especially managers and CEOs of big companies, are so firm on the way their employees conduct themselves when they deal with customers. All right, the second one there are the processes. So whenever you have any systems that you have to apply to offering a service or so, that's called a process. All right, so processes actually assist the company to improve their, their customer relationship. It also tells the customer how they got to offering that service. And people want to know that everything is legal and above board and 
um, that you are ethical. You'll see that's a word that's going to come up later in this lesson. All right, the third one there is our personnel, or we also refer to it as our staff. So about staff, there's a section we'll do a bit later in this chapter that deals only with our staff. Your staff is an extension of your business. It's the actual people that, people that interact with the tourist. So if you train your staff properly, if your staff looks groomed, hygiene, professional, and they can conduct themselves in a way that makes the company's image look great, that's what managers want. All right, another element contributing to professional image is the place. Now, who would have thought of that? So guys, in normal businesses, sometimes if you offer services, you ship products and so to the customer, they don't really see your place of origin where you work. But in the tourism industry, most of the time, the place is what they visit. You have a game lodge, a bed and breakfast, a hotel. That is your place of business. So the first impression for people will be when they arrive at your destination, at the place, and they look at everything. From the gardens to the actual entrance, the lights, the windows. If there's a broken window, fix it. All right, so your appearance of your place, your decor inside. Everything plays a vital role when it comes to professional image. If you don't have the time, energy, or money to fix a broken light bulb, the customer will probably think, well, will you have time and energy to give me a proper service? And you expect me to pay for it. So that's what it's all about. You see how every element, no matter how small, is linked. All right, the next one. Promotion. When it comes to promotion, it's all about how we advertise. All right. So advertisement comes in many forms, and I don't want to say too much at this moment because we're dealing with the framework here, but just remember later on, I will remind you, advertisements play a very important role because what you advertise must be true, correct, and real. All right, then company policies. Now, many people might think that policies are just a big word to say rules and regulations. In this case, when it comes to professional image, companies use professional policies to actually communicate to the community what they stand for and what they don't, what they see as acceptable and what they feel is unethical. So a lot of times companies will make available their policies to the community to say, I support this or I don't support that. And people will then basically feel the same way as the company and support them or people will feel, well, it's against their ethical values and they will decide not to support them. All right, the last one there is the prospect of the client. All right, our clients are our most important element. All right, so with clients, when it comes to professional image, you can do anything in the world to make them see a certain picture of your company, but they, will eventually determine for themselves how they perceive you. So that's what professional image is all about. All right. So the concept, professional image in the business. We all know it is our corporate image, which also links directly to the reputation. That's another synonym that you can uh, take with you there. So what the public is supposed to see when you mention the name of the business is basically what corporate image or professional image is all about. Now we're quickly going to have a look at what else affects a corporate image. Our appearance of the company, the way we behave, the company's morals and values and attitude is what clients normally determine how they will experience you as being competent and ethical. In other words, the way people wear their clothes, the way they groom themselves, the way the, the workers of the company speak. You know, people come from different backgrounds. People have different upbringings. And when you work for a company, all those diversities are all collectively in one place. So that the company needs to find a way to make those workers speak the same way, have them show the customers that they are well-educated and that, of course, is our last one there as well. So, guys, very important. They say that management, and this is our key aspect, 
management shape the company's image. In other words, through the way a manager communicates with his workers and tell his workers and train his workers to communicate with customers, he will set an example of how to actually have a great image for his company. Now the sad part is, it is actually said that a casual act of an employee, just one employee in your company can either uplift your image or it can pull down the image of your company. I'm going to give you a practical example on this. So let's say you have a garden engineer at your hotel. The gardens are beautiful. This guy is like an like a expert in the garden. But he has no formal training of how to interact with customers because he will never have to interact with customers. He deals with the gardening. All right. Now a customer approaches the building, have never heard of the place before, come onto the premises, and from the angle the customer approach, it's not specifically clear where the reception is or how to, to talk to someone in the management or so. And this customer or tourist stops by this garden engineer. Asking this person, excuse me, sir or ma'am, can you please assist me? I want to make a booking at this gorgeous hotel. Now, there's two ways how this garden engineer can react. If the person was not part of the process of training and skills development and corporate image and understanding the bigger picture, he can just say, I don't know, I just do the gardens. Find it yourself. How would you think the customer would feel? That's not really being professional, although it wasn't his work to direct the customer to the reception. However, on the other hand, if this person can direct the customer professionally, good day. My name is so-and-so, I work for this lovely hotel. Let me assist you and take you to our front office clerk who will gladly assist you with your query. We're so happy to see you. I hope you enjoy the time you are here with us. Now that is professional communication. And that contributes, of course, directly to the image of the hotel. All right, so what else contributes to a professional image? The quality and the quantity of your services and products. In other words, how effective are your services and how many of those services can you offer on that high standard? That's very important. Also, the way you conduct yourself in a professional manner, it will tell people that you have expertise in your field and that you can deal with customers effectively. All right, so positive professional image have the following advantages. And that is what's important for a company. Number one, the customer will return if he was happy with the service. Number two, the customer, having customers return will give the company a better sense of self-image. And number three, it will create a better word of mouth. Let me quickly explain word of mouth to those of you who have heard of it before, but still not 100% sure what it means. Word of mouth is a term used in marketing. That is the unspoken or the unwritten marketing method. For example, you visit a place, you have an exceptional experience, you are so happy, you go back home, you tell your friends and family all about it, they can't wait to visit this place that you've mentioned, and in conversations where you are not, they also talk to other people about your experience. Now, all this talking in a positive way makes people curious. It makes people want to travel to this location, destination or attraction and experience what they've heard themselves. Now, that's called word of mouth. All right, so word of mouth brings people back. Of course, if the word of mouth is negative, people will not visit your attraction even though they might have heard good things about it. If they hear bad things about it, they might not want to visit these attractions. And maybe it was just one experience that gone bad. So you must also focus on positive word of mouth. All right, and then very important, I think this is in every business the case, your competitive advantage. This means how you compare yourself to other businesses, and those businesses, of course, are the businesses that are in the same sector. All right. In other words, they do the same as you, they sell the same as you, 
If you have a competitive advantage because of your professional image, it means people will choose you over the other business because they just trust you more, they've experienced your products, maybe they've experienced the other business products and services as well, and yours were better because you are professional. All right, so those are contributing factors to professional image. So guys, the framework for this chapter, in other words, the actual elements that contributes to a professional image of a company boils down to the following elements. I'm quickly going to show you and then we're going to discuss each and every one of them. Number one, your logo, your name, sorry. I say logo because logo and name, these are all connected. You'll see now. So the name of your company is very important. People will, mem they will remember it for sure and they will connect a good or a bad experience to it. Number two, your name must have a logo because your logo eventually becomes your image of your company on written communication. With a logo comes a slogan. So basically those three are connected. The slogan is normally that picture that represents your name and logo. Then number four is our website, how we advertise online. Number five is our stationery and how we brand our stationery. And then number six is our image of our staff. Again, can you see this is coming up? It's so important um, the way our staff conducts themselves when it comes to a company's image. Number seven will be our marketing material. In other words, whatever else we are advertising or using as advertisements. Number eight is our packaging. If you are, for example, working in the conference industry and um, you are the host, although it's other businesses who have their conferences held at your venue, sometimes you are requested to offer lunch packages or you are requested to offer uh, stationery or so for the guests. Now, it's very wise to do that in a professional manner. In other words, to actually have a package put together. Some pens, papers, bottled water, uh, maybe some mints. Uh, that's just the basic entry level um, stuff to, to prepare for a conference. However, the way you package your food, the way you package your stationery, the branding on it is so important. If you do effort, um, it shows that you are professional and you are very serious about your brand. All right, then here at number nine, we have our physical appearance. That's the physical building vehicles uh, and what people see with their eyes. And then as I've mentioned, we have our policies, what the company stands for. And last but not least, it's very important, the type of awards that um, companies get. Uh, and you'll see later, we're gonna talk about how companies use awards in their advertisements to tell the public that they are doing something great for humanity and for the environment. And that really uplifts their corporate or professional image as well. So guys, let's not waste another second. Let's start with the first element, as I mentioned to you, the name of a business. I'm just briefly gonna give you a few elements that you have to consider when you think about a name of your company because the name will stay with you forever. Number one, it must be easy to remember. Having difficult names or long names or so will just basically tell, or people will just figure out later that, oh my gosh, there's this lovely hotel in Johannesburg that I want you to go and stay at, but I, I can't remember the name. What's the use in that? So make sure your name is powerful and short. All right, is it descriptive? Does the name tell you what your business do? Um, I've, I've seen a few times you, you get a name for a company and you think they deal in travel, traveling or so, but then at the end of the day, they do packaging. Um, the name must represent the type of business you do. Uh, the, all right, for instance, travel agencies. Um, I know of uh, flight, you hear the word flight center, flight, flying, center. So you get the idea, it's a travel agency. Just an example. Is the meaning of the name clear and is the name unique? That's very important. Can the name be used easily in advertisement? At the end of the day, you're going to advertise your company. And if you can't use that name effectively, um, you're going to have a problem. And then very important, businesses are registered. 
and you try to get a professional image for your business and you try to create a trademark, can you register this name as a trademark? So when it comes to the name of a business, you starting up your own business in the tourism industry, it's very important that you consider these elements. At the end of the day, you have to pick the right name. All right, now we get to the logo. Now immediately I hope on your screen that, or on your TV, you will immediately be drawn to the bottom here and you see we've got three logos here. So logos are small designs or pictures that are very colorful and creative and it becomes the official sign of your company. Now guys, looking at the bottom there, there's no way you're not going to know what this logo stands for. In fact, when I see this, I'm missing it already. McDonald's, eh? And then the next one, for those of you who haven't been to any of our parks in South Africa, that is the Sand Parks logo. All right, in other words, South Africa National Parks. And that's the logo for Sand Parks. And then the last one, very sad at this stage, and so um, I've, I assume you've read in the news and heard about it. This is, was, is, don't know really how to put it, our South African Airways logo, our own proudly um, uh, flying company or, or airliner. All right, so the purpose of the logo is to demonstrate the company's values and goals, and the logo should appear on the company's letterheads, envelopes, and invoices. So guys, this is why logo is so important. Most of the time, people will deviate from the name, or your name and logo is so intermixed that uh, people just start using the picture, the logo. And once they use the logo, and people are familiar with your company and business, it is what will be recognized by all customers. It will remind the customers of your company. All right, the next one, slogan. It's that saying, that striking saying. The striking saying is very important. All right, it's a phrase that was used in advertising, and this phrase says something about your company's goals. Let's have a look here. I'm, I bet you know these phrases here. Uh, our famous clothing and uh, shoe brand, Nike, just do it. And then again, the McDonald's one is so popular. I'm loving it, that one over there. Very important. It's a slogan, that, slogan that's catchy and it sticks with us. I'm, I can think of another one now. now. Oh, I'm talking about food. KFC, finger licking good. Just by listening to that slogan, it already gives you an idea of what to expect. And that is what people want, especially managers and CEOs when they decide upon slogans in their business. Our stationery, it's the written communication. Uh, and this is very important, and it will later be discussed in an exam question paper that, uh, that uh, uh, one of you sent in. So we put it on our letterheads, our invoices, our business cards, our files, envelopes. Guys, basically, any form of stationery that you have, whether it's paper, pens, erasers, anything you send out to customers, if you have money, because it's very expensive, you put your branding, your logo, name, slogan, and contact details on your stationery. And the idea behind that is that every time people use your stationery, they are reminded that you exist. It brings them back to a fond memory or it makes them curious and eventually they use those details that's on the pen or paper and they phone you and they visit you eventually. So with stationery, as you can see uh, in the picture, it is everywhere on all your business cards anywhere you can find a place to put it, but especially your invoices, with which people will most likely deal with in businesses. All right. Websites and social media. A website allows a business to be seen all over the world because we have internet. So this means that if you have a website, guys, and this is very important, I find it a lot, if you go onto a company's website, especially in the tourism industry and in more remote areas of a country, People put up a website, that website has been there for 10 years. Pictures have changed, circumstances have changed, things have changed, but the website is still the same. So it's very important to have the updated website. In today's society, it's very important to have social media linked to your website so that people can interact with you because that's what social media is all about. And um, most importantly is the way that you design your website because it's the first 
contact of business that a potential customer will have, if they look at your website and they feel it is neglected, they will assume that your company's services are neglected as well. Guys, tips for website design. Now, this is very important because at the end of the day, we need to make sure our website is in the interest of the company's professional image. It must be user-friendly, and like I said, it must be connected to your social media if it's necessary. Colors and background, very important. Um, you have to make sure that you do not sacrifice readability for a look that you want. Sometimes people want the specific look in their website. They want it to be catchy and so, and then they put scripts and text and links in there that's so small that even if you zoom into it, you struggle to actually read the information or you put down too much information. So it's very important that you do not sacrifice um, readability of your website for a specific look you want. Now in websites, you know, apart from text, we have links. If you click on it, it takes you to another place and virtual links. Those must be very visible. And in, uh, very important, the size of your website must not be too large because it will affect the download speed uh, when people access your web website. Avoid using multiple links. Trust me, the most irritating thing is normally when you go onto a website of a company and you have to click on a link if you want to go deeper and then click on another link and click on another link and eventually your computer says, okay, this link couldn't open. It creates problems. So the design of your website when it comes to links is extremely important. Spell check everything before uploading. There's nothing as bad as spelling mistakes that are there forever. And then developing interactive areas like chat rooms. That's where the social media comes in. All right, it, it can be used for feedback. You can even share articles with the interested parties like your customers and they are able to view the content. All right, your marketing material. Guys, marketing actually consists of four elements. The first one there is our advertisements. Advertisements are the pictures, it is the short films if you, if you produce something uh, via video, and it's also the way we advertise our businesses, either in newspapers, magazines, radio, or TV. It must be very attractive. And the one thing that companies sometimes do, that companies that don't have experience is, they put prices on these advertisements. Now let's say you've got a billboard up somewhere, you put a price for your service or a package or a tour, unless that price will stick for the next four years or two months or so, yeah, prices change. You wanna, you're gonna wanna pr change that price eventually, so it's not wise to put prices up on, up on advertisements. However, if we go down here, brochures plays a vital role. I think with uh, social media today's uh, brochures have stepped back a little bit, but let me explain to you. So a brochure is that thin, small little booklet that you get with a lot of pictures in it and a lot of descriptions about the product or service, and you can take it home with you. Sometimes we get brochures these days in our windows at shopping centers. People put their brochures in there, uh, the window of your car, and when you leave, you can have a look at it at home. It irritates us initially, but if it's something that we are interested in eventually, we're happy that we found it. Now, the thing with a brochure is that the way your brochure is designed is very important. And we were taught this a long time ago, and I actually experienced it. We were taught by our lecturers a while back that if you had the same guest house or a guest house, for example, they wanted us to design two brochures. The one must be simple, straightforward, square, few pictures here and there, information, that's it. The other one must be totally different out of the box. And then we had a little contest to see which brochure will customers pick up if it's displayed. Now, guys, when it comes to brochures, eventually the one that was very popular was not the normal one. The one that was very popular was in a cubic shape. It was actually stacked like a pyramid and uh, people walked past it and they wanted to grab a block from this pyramid. All right, so in this brochure, you have to have a lot of pictures with people in it, especially in tourism. You wanna see people enjoy themselves. You wanna see people having fun. You wanna see people in the picture experiencing the service. 
So it's not wise to just have a picture of a lodge of the nice swimming pool, the clean, tidy room, um, the clean restaurant with no people in it. Yeah, that is your facilities, but you have to show people the experience. So brochures can help you to do that. Another one here is posters. Those are our large printed photos and pictures. Also, we can put big posters up as billboards next to highways. And then lastly, our product packaging, which is basically, as you can see here, I mentioned it earlier, if you have a convention or a conference, the way you package your products or your refreshments will tell people about your trademark, who you are. Look here again. Oh, I'm getting hungry here. McDonald's. Look at all the branding that McDonald's use on their packaging to tell you exactly who and what they are. Okay. Physical appearance. So guys, the physical appearance, as mentioned earlier, is the way your business premises look. It can also pull through to your workers' uniform. It can pull through to the inside of your business. It can even pull through to your vehicles that you use to go and buy products and services for your company. So physical appearance, if we have a look at the textbook definition here, it's what your business look like from the outside. It has an impact on the customer's choice to buy from that business. If your premises is not really well looked after, people will think your products and services will also lack that uh, touch of professionalism. So basically, your appearance in your business uh, make people perceive you as either professional or not. A company's appearance is directly linked to its available funds. Now, guys, you don't have to go all out if you don't have all the funds in a company to be like your competitors or so if they have more funds than you. The principle is keep everything clean and neat and in a working condition and be proud about it. Show people from outside that you are proud about it. All right, and the last one there, and I think this in the tourism industry is massive. You have to cater for people with disabilities. You have to make sure you've got those ramps, those bathrooms, and that people with disabilities can also enjoy your product or service. Factors contributing to your physical appearance at the outside appeal, you must make sure small things, cigarette butts, make sure your displays uh, is changed regularly. Back to cigarettes, but meaning guys pick it up. Make sure your people working for you have your premises look clean and tidy. All right, have a look at your competitor's physical appearance. Make sure yours are in the same range or better. Decoration, decor, make sure your offices are nicely decorated. Have clean bathrooms and kitchens, very important. Bathrooms, no odors. Proper lighting in your restaurants and so. Display if you have sales and the materials and make sure that you have always clear price labels. People don't want to go around and call a sales agent every two minutes say, listen, I'll pick this up, this souvenir, how much? Um, put the prices on the products and make sure it's up to standard and up to date. And then keep your shelves dusted and stocked. All right. The next one, our environmental policies. Every company has a contribution to our environment. Every company has certain activities um, and when they do and manage these activities in the right way, they want to communicate to customers that they do little or even no harm to the environment. So these are called environmental projects of the company and it's normally about water and energy preservation. Now if they communicate these type of projects to their customers in their marketing, it contributes a lot to the customer image um, of the company, the professional image. All right, customer service policies. I want to jump straight to this picture. Here it says, our policy, rule one, the customer is always right. You've heard that one before. Now, if, if a manager says to a worker, or the, let's say the worker asks the manager, but sir, what if the customer is not always right? And that's exactly what it says there. Then the manager says, oh, well, then you go straight back to rule number one. The customer is always correct. In other words, when it comes to customer service, it's very important to always listen to your customers. If they complain, they have a reason why they are unhappy. Whether you agree with that reason or not is the challenge. That is where you're going to come in as a company and try and satisfy them so that they will come back and here's where it comes in, that positive word of mouth that will be communicated to others. 
All right. So excellent service makes clients loyal, which creates a positive name. Again, this is linked to corporate professional image. We want our customers to be happy, and we're going to show this through our procedures and policies that our company writes about how to treat customers when they complain. We want to be committed to service delivery that are excellent, and therefore in South Africa, uh, they've introduced bar to peel principles. No, the, the emphasis in tourism is not to, ex to have you explain in depth what these bar to peel principles are, but you need to understand that there are principles when it comes to customer service delivery. The first one is consultation. In other words, be able to communicate with your customers freely without uh, avoiding one another. Customers need to be able to access information whenever they need it. You have to give best value that you can offer to your customers. Your service standards need to be of exceptional value. Your company needs to be transparent. That means that people need to understand that you've got nothing to hide when it comes to legalities or ethnicalities. You are open, in other words, approachable. Courtesy is all about your, the way you conduct yourself in discipline and you have an effective way of dealing with customer complaints. So just in general, guys, those are our general bar to pele principles. How our staff can contribute to professional image. Now, staff plays a vital role, and I've mentioned it a few times already. The first element of our staff that is so important is the way that people look. Now, here at the bottom, I want to put emphasis on that. Let's quickly read that. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. That is so true. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So what people see is what they will actually trust and believe. So when it comes to your staff uniforms, guys, it's very important. It's simple to remember. You get two type of situations in the, in the workplace. Either your company will... Uh, prescribe uniforms to you because you are in an industry where everyone must look the same and uh, it also contributes to that professional look the company wants. For example, if we are in a restaurant, people would like to know that this is our chef, he will have a specific uniform with of course the chef hat and it's normally white. Um, when you are in game ranging or game farms or so, people normally tend to wear uh, short sleeve uh, shirts and pants with uh, tough, durable um, shoes because they walk a lot in the felt and it will normally be neutral colors as well, khaki colors, brown colors, uh, green colors to blend into the environment, of course, with all the badges and patches to make you show, to, to show you that they are actually working for the reserve. They are in a professional capacity. So guys, uniforms, very important. Um, it's so that staff can all look the same if it is prescribed and it's also to create a trademark. That's very important because it gives you an idea of what the company stands for. So impressions are literally based on uh, what people see. Um, so what they see is what they get as we started this chapter with. Your clothes, your hairstyle, your posture, and smile. It sometimes feels fake, but that's what you have to do in this line of work. And then the nonverbal communication. Guys, I can't tell you that uh, sometimes I've experienced walking into a business, um, customers and uh, people working for the company don't always realize that they are looking at each other to get a vibe. Now, you can ask a, a worker for a, a product or a price or to give you a description and so, and that worker can be all professional and smile and so, but as you turn away and they turn away, you pick up on that uh, non-verbal communication. It can be a sigh, it can be a frown. Um, so be very careful if you are the worker of the company. You cannot have your personal emotions come through when you deal with customers. So it's very important to be professional in all aspects. All right. As it says here, in less than 30 seconds, you form an opinion of a person. So the business, if they have a casual dress policy, they will allow people or their workers to actually work in a comfortable environment in the workplace. But it's very, very, very important that the workers must still look professional. So going forward in this uh, chapter, we're going to look at 
what is it that workers can do from their side to look professional. First of all, it comes to your dress code. Now, a dress code is something that will be captured in the company's code of conduct. They will prescribe to you, unless we give you a uniform, this is the way you dress. Now, there can be formal dress code or informal dressing styles. However, it doesn't matter. The, cust the worker always needs to look neat. The worker needs to be groomed, uh, whether you wear a uniform or not. Now, just a, a quick glance here. It's professional if you work in an office environment. As a man, to normally have polished shoes, to have a belt with your formal pants, to have a formal button shirt, um, you can have a nice fancy watch, not too much or hopefully any extra jewelry. And if you wear a tie, you have to wear it in the correct way. When you are a woman, it's very important, especially in the tourism industry, and yeah, this person almost looked like a flight attendant to me, if I can make an assumption here. Yeah, you must have your hairstyle clean and professional. Um, makeup, the way you do your makeup is very important. It needs to be um, limited and not too uh, excessive. Um, you can also wear a women's suit. You can use neutral, neutral color stockings. Um, you can wear a dress or pants, whatever suits you, if it's not prescribed in the company policy. And this is also very important, little or no jewelry. Okay, so guys, yeah, when it comes to your dress code, it actually tells people a lot of who you are. Uh, sometimes people can be perceived uh, as some, someone different than who they are because of the way they are dressed. Um, so yeah, dress code plays a role in the company's professional conduct. Personal hygiene. This is something you cannot force people to do, but you can just hope for it if you are a manager uh, of people in a company. It's all about the personal hygiene. Now guys, in today, uh, today's life with the coronavirus going about and everyone so stressed out, I think you've heard more than enough about personal hygiene. All right, so with the virus going around, we talk about washing our hands, sanitizing, etc., etc. When we talk about personal hygiene as a worker for a company, we go over and beyond just washing your hands. We need to make sure that our hands are clean, our nails look pre uh, presentable, our face, our clothes, and our shoes should always be clean at all times. Now, the way to do that, guys, it's no secret. We've been doing it since... Uh, We've been doing it ourselves after the age of two years, probably. Bath and shower, shave nicely, clean, or if you have men a beard or so, keep it nicely trimmed to look professional. Girls, you wear the makeup in such a way that it is not too excessive. Same with jewelry. Perfume, you're allowed to wear perfume, but um, can you imagine 10 people with different scents in one place? It can just create an interesting uh, smell. Your hair must be tidy. When you open your mouth, your teeth must be clean. Your mouth must be clean. And then, of course, your hands and nails must look presentable. So these elements all form part of our personal hygiene. It's something that we ought to be looking after every single day. But sometimes in a business, again, when people come from different backgrounds and diversity comes together in one place, sometimes a company needs to tell uh, employees, this is the way we want it because this is our image. Okay. Grooming. When staff attend to their appearance, that's what grooming is all about. So um, hygiene, grooming, almost the same category, but this is more about what you wear, what you put on your hands, what you put on your nails, and the style that you wear your hair in. So people working with long hair in the hospitality industry, the tourism industry, it's very important that you must tie back and cover your hair while you are working. It's just etiquette. All right, makeup and fragrances. Again, we say it's tasteful and it's better to not wear any jewelry at all than to wear too much. Sometimes I've experienced that you talk to a lady and she's got bangles from here up to there, bangles on the neck, earrings that hang and everything as she speaks and explains clutters and it's a distraction. At the end of the day, you have to ask your question twice because you were so focused on all the jewelry. So jewelry, accessory, accessories and so should not be a problem when it comes to grooming in the tourism industry. Also, 
careful. Some perfumes can trigger asthma or other allergies when it comes to clients. So it should never, ever overpower a room. Right. Interaction with customers, this is you. You are the worker for a company, and you will not understand until you're there one day how much your, you can play a role in the image of your company. You work with referrals from other companies or clients. You work with clients who've been uh, dealing with your services for the, in the past. You have current clients, and then you have people who are interested to become clients of yours. So this whole picture is very important, and how you can affect it as a worker is as follows. Be polite, be friendly, especially be professional. Identify opportunities where you can improve your service. In other words, guys, if you deal with customer complaints, maybe it's your first time working for the company and you've got a customer that's very unhappy. Next time when you have a similar situation, you could have learned from your previous experience. You can even go to your manager and tell the manager, I had this situation. I don't know how to deal with it. I know there's policy, but please assist me because next time I want to be even more professional with dealing with this customer complaint. All right, always be honest, act with integrity, and be ethical. In other words, have morals and values. Demonstrate that you understand the sensitivity of the customer complaint and show respect. Never, ever, ever, ever be angry or emotional. We leave that at home. Admit your mistakes and apologize. Guys, this is something that we in society can actually learn from each other. There's nothing wrong to apologize when you made a mistake. We are human. Everyone can make a mistake. If you apologize professionally, whether it's in writing in an email, it actually helps us to understand that... Um, Mistakes happen and it can be rectified. It shows humility, humility. All right, treat your customers the way you want to be treated. That's a number one rule when it comes to interaction with customers. And then communication skills, the last part of our chapter before we will take a break again. A positive body language, speaking politely with confidence and showing that you've got knowledge to be able to deal with the customer. This will create and display professionalism. How can we actually communicate with customers in a good way? By the use of our language and the tone we speak with them. It will show them that um, we know what we're doing. So guys, customer communication, it is something that a skill or something that you have to acquire. Um, you get taught how to speak to people professionally. You cannot speak to customers the way you speak to your siblings and your parents and your friends uh, at home and in a social environment. You have to consider the values of the company because you represent the company. All right. You have to be able to provide clear info to customers about products and services. Nothing so bad as when a customer asks a question about a product and after a whole explanation, you still actually realize they didn't tell you anything. Active listening, this means that there's two-way communication. The best way is when a customer asks a question, you respond back, and at the end of your response, you kind of confirm what the customer asked, and he in return will say, yes, that's exactly what I mean, or no, you don't understand. So two-way communication is very important. Try to identify the needs and expectations of the customer and try to fulfill it. Be sensitive, especially when working with different cultural uh, cultures as well as difference in social streams. Identify where there could be possible conflict and find a solution. So to improve your customer service and communication skills, that's a task of management. Management, in this case, need to be prepared to do effective interviews, to train their workers so that they know they put the right person in the right job because it's all about their image.